talking about uh, receiving and ministering healing. If you're online, welcome. And you need to uh, put your faith out and believe God to learn how to minister better and learn how to receive healing better. Uh, who can tell me how you get healed if you're a believer? How do you receive your healing? By faith. Say, by faith. We have to exercise our faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the... So we have to put ourselves under the Word of God over and over and over and renew our mind to the fact that it is the will of God to heal us now, always. Not somewhere in the future. Well, someday I'm going to get healed. When you do that, you're not exercising faith. You're pushing your healing away. We want to receive tonight. Uh, <clears throat> we want to receive by the grace of God and the power of God through faith. And we want to believe that things change. And we become better ministers, right? We want to be better ministers. And we want to receive, if you're here to receive, uh, you'll be able to receive through faith tonight. And our faith will make you free and help you. Raj is back there, I see. He, he was healed two weeks ago. 14 to 18% of his heart was in function, was working. And the doctor was going to, uh, in his mind, give him a bi multiple bypass and bang, 100% use of his heart, a heart of a 20 year old in Jesus name. Praise the name of Jesus. How many know it, it's good for Raj to be here tonight, yeah. right? Because he got his healing, but then it's not over. Yeah. You know, you want to keep yourself under the healing presence of God as much as you can. The word on healing. <clears throat> Until you know what the will of God is, there's no faith. So people, you hear people pray, um, Lord, if it's your will, would you save so-and-so? If it's your will, would you heal so-and-so? Those are prayers with zero faith. And we're not to pray like that. Uh, we're, to, we're to be believers. And we, uh, faith begins where the will of God is known. Say it out loud. I make it. <laughs> so if you don't know what the will of God is, you have no faith. So you have to determine what the will of God is. Um, remember in the book of Ephesians, it says that we are to know what God's will is. Right? Do you know that scripture? Let's just turn there for a minute. Uh, just to make sure you do know that scripture, and if you're listening online, that uh, go turn with me to the book of Ephesians. The word of God is powerful. With the Holy Spirit activating it, it brings transformation. Everybody say, I'm going to transform tonight. We just don't religiously read the Bible. We want the spirit of God to touch us. Uh, it says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. In other words, you're not wise if you don't know what the will of the Lord is. And God wants us wise, right? He wants us to know what his will is. So when we pray and we talk to the Lord, we want to talk from the perspective of knowing his will. Not from the perspective of begging or 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 trying to get him to do something by us performing a good prayer or something like that. We want to know what his will is. It is his absolute will to heal everyone all the time right now. And if you believe that, that, that is the beginning of you growing in your faith to see more and more of the healing power of God uh, at work in your life. So we've been looking at... Uh, <laughs> for well over a year, we've been looking, we first looked at 20, 22 weeks, I think, so it's on the podcast, it's online, of uh, why it's God's will to heal us now. We wanted to establish that first. And if you've been in this course, if you haven't been, you can get those all online and renew your faith to the fact that he wants to heal you. Yes. Right? He does, does the Bible say this? He wants no man to perish, but all to come to eternal life, right? Well, that eternal life is health, just as much as it is being born again to go to heaven. It's all inclusive, right? He, he doesn't want us to perish. He doesn't, he doesn't 
teach us something through sickness. He never uh, tries to, sh to mature us through taking us through stuff. All that kind of stuff is religion, and it's not biblical. And we determined that we want to be people of the word, right? We've got to be people of the word. And the word is so lacking in our culture. The, so, the word is so uh, misrepresent, misrepresented. People use wives' tales and they say they're the word. All kinds of traditions of men. But we've got to be people of the word. Everybody say, the word, the word. is what Holy Spirit anoints. It's what Holy Spirit. <laughs> right? Holy Spirit in the beginning, right in Genesis. <clears throat> Holy Spirit... Uh, moved when the word was released when the father released the word to create this world we live in is when holy spirit moved so the word moves holy spirit the truth not facts not feelings not all the things of this world it's the truth that moves the holy spirit and so we want to be we want to be people of the truth we want we want the holy spirit we, we, we want the, the Word of God and the Spirit of God working together. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so we're learning how to receive, and we're learning how to minister healing. So we determined that it's always God's will to heal us now. And then we've, uh, in the last 20-some-odd weeks, we've been talking, um, we've been taking every scripture in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, now we're into the book of Acts, uh, on individual healings there's there's actually about well we looked at 20 individual healings in matthew mark luke and john and it seems like there's many more than that because the multitudes were healed he healed all the crowds at different times but we just looked at the ones we knew what was wrong with them we, we looked at the ones that we knew what how jesus ministered to them so that we could grow in our faith on how to minister, how to receive. And so the individual cases, some of them are multiplied in several Gospels, but there's 19 to 20 individual cases in the Gospels that we can learn a lot from, and we did. And then the Spirit of God said, well, keep going on this into the book of Acts. So if you turn to, it, turn to me, or turn to me, turn to <laughs> the book of Acts chapter 1, and look at verse 1. This is, this is the doctor. We found out that the doctor, Luke, uh, he was always looking at details. So in the Gospels, when somebody was getting healed, he'd add some things to it because he was a doctor. What fascinates me is Luke, who was a medical doctor, never once in his Gospel or in the writings in the book of Acts said, you know, sometimes natural methods are best. Never once. If anything, he was probably the most profoundly interested in the supernatural. And that's the way it should be. We shouldn't, be, we shouldn't, we would, shouldn't settle for remedies. You know, there are things that help us, you know, we, but, but, but we need to be supernatural first. We need to be supernatural first. And God still does miracles today. God still heals today. Glory be to Jesus. We need to believe for it. Hallelujah. So Luke, when he begins to write the book of Acts, because he's wrote the Gospel of Luke, now he writes, he, if you didn't know, he wrote, wrote the book of Acts, and he says in the very first verse, the former account I made, O Theophilus, he's writing it to Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. In other words, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, was the beginning of what Jesus began to do and teach. And then he's moving now into the book of Acts, basically saying the Gospels was the beginning. And it continues on. You mean, Pastor, that it can continue on when Jesus is in heaven? Is Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever? Is he any, he's no respecter of persons. He can do it tonight. Jesus can do it tonight just as he did it in the Gospels. It didn't pass away with the apostles. It didn't pass away uh, when Jesus left the planet. His Holy Spirit is here. He's in believers. And he wants to do the same things, the same things as he did in the Gospels and in the book of Acts. See, people say, well, you know, uh, Jesus had to do miracles because he had to prove he was the Son of God. Wrong. 
He, de he didn't have to prove anything. And we, we saw that in the word. And then, then other groups of people say, well, you know, the apostles needed to do miracles to build the church. Wrong. <laughs> That's not why we, we need signs and wonders and miracles. It is a redemptive act to be divinely healed, to live in health and wholeness. It's part of our redemption. Jesus didn't have to go to the whipping post on the way to the cross, did he? But he, made, he took an extra turn on his way to Calvary to get whipped. It wasn't just a coincidence and an accident. And How many know everything was on purpose? So when he went to the whipping post and he took those lashes, what was that? Yeah, it was for sickness and disease. It was punishment. Say sickness is punishment. So when you get sick, you're receiving punishment. Say, I'm not to receive any punishment. Since the cross, all punishment was put on Jesus. Say, Jesus took all my punishment, including sickness and disease, because it was punishment. So, so when sickness and disease comes to your house, you have to see it that way. You have to see it as as. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not entitled to be punished because I believe in my Savior as my substitute. I believe that Jesus took my place at Calvary's cross and took my punishment. Hallelujah. See, we, there, there is grace right now. Everybody say hallelujah. For all our dumb junk. There is grace. Now, we got to have humble and repentant hearts. You just can't walk through life and do whatever you want to do and believe for grace. Grace comes to those who are humble, right? God looks after us. We, how, if you, have you all lived your life perfectly on purpose and done everything perfect? No, we make mistakes every day. We say things, but there's, there's grace for that. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. <clears throat> so, uh, um, let me give you a couple other little testimonies. We got a text from, we had our, we had our revival meetings here uh, the last couple days. Kids revival meetings too. And uh, uh, Pastor Savan, our Pastor Savan and Dennis Pastor, our Victory Church in Sudbury, they had brought two of their grand boy, the grandsons to the, to the meetings. And uh, on, on her way home, she's, she texts us after the meetings are over and she says, um, my one grandson got saved. And my other grandson got filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? Many people touched. God was moving powerfully last night. Was that last night? Whatever. Last night. And, and, um, and one of our pastors, our pastor from Concordon, Pastor Tina, um, she was in the bathroom throwing up. And uh, she told me this to, this morning. She, she says, I, I ate something or something, and I, got, I was sick, and I'm in the bathroom. And she said, I came through the doors, and when I walked through the doors, the Spirit of God said, I'm healing your stomach. And bam, she got totally healed in her stomach. <clears throat> Two minutes earlier, she's showing up in her bathrooms. Hallelujah. God is a healer. I said, God is a healer. And we have to believe, right? And the more we believe, see, and then we've got to testify. This is, this, this is hard for Canadians, okay? And I'm determined. I'm going to tell everybody about everything that God, I, you know, and I didn't used to do that because I, I didn't want to, I, I, I did a little, but not like I'm going to. Every time I see Raj, I'm going to tell everybody about Raj. <laughs> we need to do that. And not just once. I, I like what Bill Johnson says. Bill Johnson says, make sure you tell the testimonies. You know what? Because, see, what happens sometimes is the enemy will counterattack because that's what he does. So somebody gets healed, right? And then, there's a, then, there, then the enemy, who, who's a good adversary, he comes back. And then you've got to put him down again. Almost every time, right? So, so uh, when that counterattack comes... Uh, some, some people fall away or, you know, things happen. But Bill Johnson continuously gives the testimony of the healing. No matter what state the person's in. 
Do you understand that? It's very important. It's very important because God healed. And God heals. Right? Constantly. So don't be intimidated by, you know, well, we prayed and then there was improvement and then there was an improvement. Like we've had some miraculous things lately and that's wonderful. But sometimes there's some progress, right? And then it goes back a little bit. Keep talking about the progress. I said, keep talking about the progress because it's in the progress of your testimony and your confession that the stability of the healing takes place. The Bible says we defeat the enemy by the word of our testimony. Is that right? Well, one of the ways, the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So we got to testify. So, so don't get discouraged if things back up a little. Uh, you know, if, if somebody goes 10% this way and then 5% back or maybe 20% back because they went 10% that way. So talk about the 10% that way. Don't look at what the enemy's doing. Look at what the Lord is doing and, and testify to it. Because see, the principle is this. When you testify about what Jesus is doing, Jesus does it more. Yes, he does, always. Always. And so just, just be blabbermouth. The world is blabbing about junk all over the place. And we just got to talk about Jesus. And don't be concerned about proving it. There was a whole school of uh, thought there for a while that we got to have doctor's reports and all that kind of stuff. We don't need that. Because the people that want to hear, the ones that want to believe will hear it and receive it. And the ones that are critics aren't going to anyways, just with a piece of paper. So it just, just, just blab. Hallelujah. Talk about, talk about it at your kitchen table. Talk about it in front of your kids, even if they're not believers. Talk about it with your grandkids. Talk, because see, see that's one thing in, in, the, in the day of the early Pentecostal movement in the early 1900s, they talked about everything all the time. And they just continuously talk. Kids grew up hearing the stories. And then when they backslid, they'd hear the stories in their head. See, this is how it works. When you, when you testify of truth, then angels can come years later and speak the truth that was spoken out of a believer's life and remind people. If it's a lie that's being spoken by the devil, the demons can come and talk about those lies forever into that person's head. There's way too many lies being heard and reinforced and not enough uh, uh, truth being reinforced because the church is backing away and we need to come out forward and we need to declare and decree and say things in our words all the time. Even if, even if you mess up and, and you contradict your own words, keep talking the truth. Because the enemy will say, well, who do you think you are? You just did the opposite of what you always say. Just say it anyway. Yes. Just talk the truth. The truth. Everybody say the truth. The truth. Say the truth, will make me free. the truth will make me free. Right? The truth to which I understand will make me free. Yes. Hallelujah. How, you, have you heard things like, well, you know, uh, Christians talk a lot, but they don't do anything. Well, we, we aren't talking about the right things. <laughs> well, it's not religious talk. It's, it's talk about the miracle power of God. It's talk about the healing power of God. It's talk about what God is doing. Not about what he's not doing. You got to focus on what he's doing. Because when you focus on what he's doing, he'll do it more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's giving him praise is what it's doing. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's praise him tonight. I praise him for what's happened this week already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise him for your healing online. Praise the name of Jesus. So many people getting touched online. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hungry to hear the truth. Do you know that people want to hear? People want to hear that Jesus always wants to heal them. They want to hear that. Religious people may not. Church folk. But the world wants to hear it. Because uh, there's so many people that have no hope. I mean, no hope. They've lost all hope. And Jesus comes in his word and he gives them hope. Praise the name of Jesus. So Luke's writing here into the book of Acts and he's declaring in the book of Acts that it's continuing. And I want to say to you that the book of Acts is still being written. Yes, it sure is. Say, we're writing it tonight. We are writing it tonight. 
and it goes on and on and on and on. Don't succumb to the cultural pressure of not believing for the supernatural. We are supernatural people. You carry heaven on the inside. You got the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of you. Not a third down, watered down version or something. The same Holy Ghost is in us tonight. Praise the name of Jesus. We just need to believe. Praise God. So Jesus, it, uh, Luke says, uh, O Theophilus, all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. In other words, he's going to do more things and he's going to teach more things as we go. And he, he takes them into the, into the book of Acts. So turn with me uh, to Acts chapter 9. And we're going to look at a particular healing in Acts chapter 9. Remember, there's two things we're doing in these in this Saturday night services. We're, we're learning how to receive better through faith. Say, my faith begins, my faith begins where, the will of God is known. where the will of God is known. It's interesting because when Jesus was on the earth, he, he, uh, he fulfilled redemptively everything that there was to be done. But ministerially, it goes on. He ministered, but his ministry didn't end when he left. It goes on. Say his ministry goes on. But the redemptive work is finished. So when he hung on the cross and said it is finished to Telestai, he wasn't talking about his ministry. He was talking about the redemptive work that he came to accomplish. The salvation from sin. The, salva the salvation from sickness and depression and curse. All the stuff that he died for was finished. But his ministry goes on. Say it's his ministry. It is Jesus' ministry. Hallelujah. So in Acts 9, look at verse 31. It says, Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace. Wow. And were edified. They're being built up, they're being encouraged, and they're in the presence of the Lord. That's pretty awesome. And walking in the fear and the reverence of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. Now that's the key to multiplication right there. That's how multiplication happens. It's through him. It's through his presence. It's through edifying each other in the word of God. It's through walking in honor and respect towards the Lord. It's the comfort of the spirit of the Lord. Now, in our culture, let's just stop here for a second. People have all kinds of different ideas about what the comforter does. If I'm sick, what's comforting? To be healed. That's what the comforter does. The comforter doesn't make you feel good in your infirmity. Right? He doesn't, you know, there's an aspect of we can comfort somebody in their pain and, and encourage them and, and edify them. But it's way more than that. Comfort to a sick person or a dying person is to have life. Comfort, if you don't have enough money, is to have more money. The comforter comes to bring comfort. I don't know about you, but if I'm, if I'm not restored, then full comfort can't come. Say, he's the comforter. But in our culture, that, that, word, that concept is like, um, I'll make you feel better as you die. I'll come and sit in your hospital uh, bed and, and talk to you nice things as you pass. That's not comfort. Now, the, it's comfort when they get to the other side, yeah. right? Praise God. How many know heaven's a lot better than here, yeah. right? You got a revelation of that? That heaven, we don't have to grieve when someone passes. If someone fights the good fight of faith and they don't, uh, they don't uh, prosper or they don't get success in this life, they get success there. Say, we never lose. Say, we always win as believers. Right? Right? But it brings God glory on earth when we're successful here. So we're not to just lay down and pass. Right? We're to fight the good fight of? Right? What is the fight of? But if you fight the good fight to the best of your ability and you don't see success in this realm, you will see success. Glory be to God. 
Hallelujah. And heaven is a wonderful place. It's way better than here. <laughs> Hallelujah. But as long as you have breath, glorify God here and exercise your faith. Don't strive. Don't strive in, I, well, I got to get healed because I got to show this person how spiritual I am. Don't, you, there's too much of that where people are trying to prove the Bible to people by, by, you know, how spiritual they are. No, just worship the Lord. Get in the word of God. Spend time with Jesus. Ask for mercy. <laughs> in one of, the, one of the, we spent a lot of time on mercy. Everybody say mercy. Every single, and there's a lot of them, every single person in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John who asked for mercy got healed. Everyone. Do a word study. Well, we did a word study. Every single person, not who asked for healing, who asked for mercy. And, they, they ne and Jesus never corrected them. He never said, you mean healing, right? No mercy. Have mercy on me, son of David. Have mercy, me, have mercy on me, son of David, over and over and over. There's, there's dozens of them that ask for mercy, and they all got healed. Every person who asked for mercy got healed in the, in the New Testament. Glory to God. Because they had an understanding of something. Because to ask for mercy is to humble yourself, recognizing that you maybe misaligned yourself somehow or stepped out into rebellion or did some dumb things that have caused this to happen to you. And so forgive me, have mercy, and the Lord, boom. Because it's a heart, right? It's a heart of humility. And you don't have to figure everything out, right? So, but you can't just go around asking for mercy and not understand what you're doing. <laughs> so, you, so pick up the podcast and listen to the mercy ones. Because, because in the mercy of God, I said in the mercy of God, is healing. Because the Bible says the Father is the Father of mercies, plural. He's full of mercies. Say many mercies. Many mercies. Glory be to, and healing is one of the mercies. Hallelujah. 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 But we got to believe, right? we got to believe. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we praise him tonight a little bit? Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Every single New Testament example of an individual going to Jesus to be healed got healed. Now, not everybody got healed in the New Testament. Because Jesus went to some, and they didn't, they had familiar spirits, they had all kinds of things, and they wouldn't believe. Some. Jesus often would heal them all, but there would be some sometimes, like in Nazareth. There would be some that wouldn't open themselves up and be able to receive from him because they were too familiar with him as a person. Right? Happens to everybody. Especially in your family. You know what I'm talking about? You know those kids that don't want to listen to you or those, or those parents that don't want to listen to you if you're young enough and they're not walking with God because they're too familiar with you. I have discussions now and again with my father and uh, there's a familiarity there that it doesn't work, right? Just because it doesn't work because, the, because you, you can get really familiar with family, Right? I had, uh, it was interesting because when I planted my first church in Owen Sound, I put my dad on the board. That was interesting. <laughs> and I had to remove him. Because it was hard for him. It was hard for him to see his son as his superior in authority. It was hard. I'm not saying it's an easy position to be in, but I needed somebody that I thought I could trust, but I couldn't trust him. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Because when you plant a church, you need people around you that you think you can trust. Glory to God. <laughs> Say familiarity, familiarity will breed contempt. It will cause people to see you. So you get over that. Say, I can't let that bother me. I'm going to testify anyway. I'm going to share my faith anyway. And get, just prepare yourself that not everybody's going to like you. Did they all love Jesus? <laughs> no, they crucified Jesus, remember? <laughs> remember that story? He, he died, right? 
praise God that he set, that, uh, he set the pathway that not everybody's going to like us, but we're going to declare the truth. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna speak out uh, the goodness of God. 3 John 2. Everybody say 3 John 2. You should have this one memorized. <clears throat> that we're to prosper and be in good health as our soul prospers. So we've, we've, on Thursday nights, we're talking about prosperity, which is success. But on, on Saturday nights, we're talking about health. You have to get health in two places. Say, I have to become healthy in two places. That's why we're here tonight. In other words, my soul has to become healthy. Right? I have to get a healthy soul if I'm going to have a healthy body. Say, a healthy soul and a healthy body internal health and external health say internal health my soul is internal right my it's my mind my will and my emotions my mind has to be healthy my my will has to be healthy my emotions have to be healthy okay so let's talk about a healthy mind what is a healthy mind yeah thinking right but in, the, in, in concerning health. God's word, very general, but what? Narrow it. Knowing God's word on health. That's what a healthy mind is. You've got to know what the Bible says about your health. He always wants to heal me now. Right? That's a healthy mind, if you believe that. A healthy mind is that he never uses sickness or curse or uh, infirmity of any kind to teach me a lesson. It's, uh, sickness is never a blessing in disguise. You hear all this junk, right? Well, I was blessed to get sick because I was in the hospital on my back and God began to speak to me in revelations. Well, he could have spoke to you in a lot of different ways. Praise God he spoke to you, right? But he can speak to you through this. I'd rather have this than go into the hospital, get sick, and have a revelation, yeah. right? He, does, he doesn't want to do that. He will help us whatever way he can. He's a good God, yeah. and he works with us, right? But he wants to work through his word. So our mind has to be healthy. What are, what's, what's a healthy will? What's that? Submission to the word on health, Right? So as we are learning these different examples on health, you, you submit your will to that. In other words, I, I, I don't rebel against that. I submit to that, Lord. I, I want to follow what your word says in the area of health. What I, and, and what is healthy emotions? Pardon? Balance, yeah. Narrow it in. What, what's a healthy emotional life? Right. So when a circumstance happens or an event happens or, or, or someone begins, uh, someone comes at me, right? You got to have your emotions in check. Your emotions are to be controlled by the spirit of God who's on the inside of you. We, we're emotional beings. But, you got, but the spirit of God will have you at times. We, we, uh, uh, we roared today and last night a lot. That's why my voice is a little weak. We were roaring. Everybody say, a holy roar. roar. Well, that is an emotional uh, response, an unction of the Spirit of God from the inside. But if if your emotions aren't in check, then circumstances externally, like a doctor's report, will cause you to express emotions. A bad report from a doctor should never make you cry. You got four weeks to live. Ah! No, I know I'm being a little hard, but that's unchecked emotions. In other words, you're not healthy in your emotional life, and because you're not healthy in your emotional life, it's not going to express itself in the cancer or in the body because you're out of control. Remember, we're to, we're to, we're to control our soul. We're to build, we're to possess our soul. Right? So we can't be out of control. See, the enemy comes, everything comes externally. 
and he put his kingdom internally in us, right? So when stuff comes externally against us, we're not moved by that. Say, I can't be. Now, we're human, but you got to get that in control. So if it initially hits you, you got to do whatever you see. That's the battle. That's what the Apostle Paul was always saying. It's not against flesh and blood. It's not against uh, uh, the things you can see and the situation, circumstances of life. And it's the demons that are coming against you, the principalities, the rulers, the, the, the stuff that comes against your life is external. Get yourself into the greater one. Say, the greater one's in me. Right? And once you take ground where you're not moved by external things, you begin to prosper. You begin to become healthy because things begin to get pushed back that have got out of order in your life. Everybody say this. Glory comes after order. Say order precedes glory. In other words, if, if, the, if the disorder in your soul isn't fixed, then the external physical problems won't be fixed. Glory is the manifested presence of the Lord. The manifested presence of the Lord comes when the order is put in line in our, in our soul. Say, my soul can change. And we're going to look at some psalms and some stuff uh, here tonight a little bit, I think. And, uh, <clears throat> but but we got to get our soul. Say, internal health. Comes through the word of God. Renewing our minds. Getting ourselves in position with Jesus, right? Worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and we live in a culture that does everything, not all of us, but a lot of, us, a lot of believers, Christians, do, do everything externally, right? Let me give you an example, and I've used this before. Well, I'm Pastor... And it happens to me a lot. Pastor, uh, I'm going to the uh, doctors next week. <clears throat> um, would you believe with me for a good report? Now, up until a couple months ago, I've been kind of nice with this. Now I'm saying no. <laughs> now let me tell you why. Because <clears throat> God's convicting me, and I just can't, I can't, I got to buck this thing. Because people are putting their faith on the report. So if you're waiting to get a good report from the doctor, you're in the flesh. That's flesh. Where's your report? Whose report shall you believe? We will repeat, re believe the report of the Lord. A believer re gets their faith, their joy, their strength from the report of the Lord. And it doesn't matter what happens at the doctor. But so many people are believing. It's like they got, they got their faith on the next report's going to be better. And so they go to get the better report, and they're absolutely in the flesh. Say, that's total flesh. Because you're living by sight and not by faith. Do you see that? So, the, so uh, if I come up to you and you say to me... <clears throat> Pastor, would you believe for me to have a good report from the doctor? I'm going to say no. That doesn't mean I don't want you to have a good report. It means I'm not going to put my faith on the doctor. Doctors, we love doctors. We need doctors. But you can't put, you can't, you're healed by King Jesus. <laughs> and your faith has to be on his report. And when the doctor witnesses with that, that's exciting. That's exciting when he gives you the report. But you already were healed before you got that report. Right? This is, this is so crucial to how you think and how you receive from the Lord and how you minister to the Lord. And this is how we help people. Because people are living by sight. Well, I want to go and get a good report from the doctor. Well, that, that's nice. But, but that shouldn't be primary. The report of the Lord has to be primary. Yes, hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. You okay? Yeah. Do you see how it's flesh? Yes. Right? We're not to live by the flesh. We're to live by the Spirit of God. He's helping us, right? We're renewing our mind. That's why we're here. Thank you, right? Yes. <laughs> how many know there's a lot of mind renewal that has to happen? Yes. And to help people, you know, because people are all over the map. When you're trying to help people... 
And, and all, don't, don't try to fix everybody else's thinking. Don't do that. People are in different places. People, don't, people are in churches that don't even believe in healing. People are in places that don't even talk about the word of healing in any way. And people are totally unrenewed. They just need your faith. They need faith. Say they need, my faith. they need my faith. So don't go in and say, you know, be led by the Lord. And if he wants to teach them a little bit, that's fine. But don't get all, just, just use your faith. Right? Use your faith. Praise God. I don't know where uh, Raj was at. You know, he, he had a report. And that, you know, it was shocking. Right? But a week later, he's healed. Because we all put our faith on, the, on getting him free. Same with Axel, who had cancer in the pancreas and in his liver. And he came in here a month ago. And bam, he's cancer free. Cancer free. Now, we need to continue to pray for Axel. Right? You just don't forget about Axel now. That's why I keep talking about Axel. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> because, because that little Chilean man needs to continuously have our prayers. Because right he's a baby Christian. Yes, he, he just got saved, really. His wife has been a Christian longer. And now, because he got, gave his heart to Jesus, uh, and, uh, you know, he, he still calls me a priest, and he does funny things. And, and <laughs> I'm his priest. Hallelujah. <laughs> But he's, he's in the kingdom, and he wants to work and get, he, he, li- he realizes it's Jesus, and he's going to get married on the 15th of September, right in the service on Sunday morning, in front of God, because he went to the city hall and, and did his civil ceremony. He wants to fix things, but he needs our prayer. People that get healed need our prayers. Hallelujah. Just don't forget about them. Let the Spirit of God bring it up in you, and uh, he'll remind you. Just touch that person. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, so I, I'm on the first verse, right? I only read, okay. Verse 32, Acts 9, verse 32. Now it came to pass as Peter went through, so they're having all this Holy Ghost and all this uh, edification in the church and there's peace in the church and the church is growing and multiplying. Now it came to pass as Peter went through all the parts of the country that he also came down to the saints who dwelled in light. Lida, or Lida, or whatever way you want to say it. Verse 33. There he found a certain man named, I'm going to call him Aeneas. All right? I think that's how you say it. Everybody say Aeneas. Aeneas. Who has been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. Everybody say eight eight years. Paralyzed in bed for eight years. And Peter said to him, now, now watch what he, he When we look at this, we're learning how to minister and we're learning how to receive, right? So in the ministry aspect, uh, Peter says to him, Aeneas, Jesus the Christ heals you. Arise and make your bed. Then he arose immediately. Now there's so much in that. Okay? And you just can't copy that. He had a declarative unction. Do you know what that is? Do you know what a declarative unction is? In other words, he had an unction of the spirit to say what he said. In other words, you don't just copy, right? Remember the, the guy at the gate called Beautiful? When, uh, when Peter says silver and gold we do not have, but in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. That was a declarative unction. In other words, on the inside... Jesus rose up, and this is why you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost, because Jesus rode up and rode, rose up in these individuals and spoke. You just can't speak out of your head, right? I just, I, I'm just, I'm just good to get out of the bed. <laughs> yeah, there's no power in her, her saying make your bed, because I just, I just leave. Hallelujah. <laughs> everybody say everybody say a declarative unction. A declarative unction. And we're going to we're going to look at it you have to be you have to allow the spirit of God to speak. Have you ever been in a situation and the Holy Ghost rose up in you and you just said something and you went, "Whoa." 
Have you done that? That can happen more and more as you practice, as you expect it, and as you fill yourself with the Spirit of God. It doesn't happen when you're half full. It doesn't happen when you've went three days without praying. It, it doesn't happen. You've got to be filled with the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will speak through you. And it, and it won't be you. Because this guy, it, he just didn't get up after eight years of paralysis because this, this guy, Peter says, get up. Right? There's, there's something on his words. Right? Just like there was something on uh, the words I spoke about healing in the stomach last night. There was something on the words. I didn't have any idea she's in the back puking. Right? She just walks into the word and goes, whoa, and then she's healed. Praise God she told me. Because if people don't tell you, you don't realize what's going on. See, more things are going on than you realize. And we need to start blabbing. Because the spirit of revival will blab. Right? And you're going to see how important it is. So, here, so, so Peter, he, he declares, uh, he says, basically, get up, arise, and make your bed. Then, then he, he arose immediately. So what happened? The word that came out of his spirit contained Holy Ghost, healing power. It's like, a, I, I envision it like a bubble, all right? It, the word is like a bubble. Like in, in the Garden of Eden, when people talked, you could see it. The atmosphere was so sin-free in the early days of in Genesis that when they spoke, you could see their words. Words contain, I, they're containers. That's why Jesus said, I am the word. I am the word made flesh and dwelt among you. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And those words were more than just words. They meant something. They contained the spirit of God in the word. So when, so, so when the Lord spoke through Peter, he just was a vessel that let his mouth say what was coming up in him. He spoke it in faith, and, and it was an instantaneous reflexive thing. Say, say, we have to become reflexive Christians. You know, when you hit your knee and it jerks, I call it a knee jerk. You know, when you hit that, that whatever that is, yeah, <clears throat> and it jerks out. That's how we have to be. We have to be so full of the presence of the Lord and ministering out of the overflow of him in our life that we become reflexive and just let, just let it fly. Right? Just, just say it. Turn to the person beside you and say, just say it. We've got to just say it and, and before we think about what we're about to say. It's not a thought up, it's not a thought up thing. How many, how many can relate to what I'm saying? You're full of the Holy Ghost and you're in a situation and you just speak something and after you think, whoa, should I have said that? Have you thought that before? And it's not emotional. It's not soulish, it's, it's out of your spirit. And you know it's spirit-led. How many have experienced it? If not, believe for it. And it will become more and more prevalent in your life. Right? Now, you've got you to step out when you feel something. Right? You have to step out. And you have to cross over that threshold of fear, or whatever, whatever wants to stop you from doing it. But you can get to the place that you don't even feel fear. You just do it. And then... And then, uh, and then God does whatever he does with that. Okay, so Peter says it. <clears throat> so realize when we're reading this that he just didn't intellectually come up with some good saying. It was actually Jesus. That's why so many times when you read in the Gospels and then you move over into Acts, the people in Acts are actually talking like Jesus did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can see Jesus talking through them because the same things are being said. Pick up your mat and walk. Pick up your mat and walk. Pick up, did, did Jesus say that? He said it a lot. We looked at all the examples in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of where Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk. He said it to the paralyzed guy coming through the roof. He said it at the guy in the, in the, por in the porches, remember, in where all the infirmed were. Um, what was the name of that pool? Salom. What's the pool that had all the, the five porches? 
Bethsaida. Yeah, the pool of Bethsaida. He said to the man, pick up your bed and walk. Right? Said it over and over again. Now, Jesus is gone. Well, he's not gone, but he's, he's in us. He's in the Acts of the Apostles. He's in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And now they're saying, they're sounding just like Jesus. Right? That's why they started to call them Christians. Christ ones. Sound just like the Christ. Well, because the Christ in them was speaking. Praise the name of Jesus. Say, I can believe for this. Come on, say, I can believe for this. You got to believe for it. If you've never heard this before and you're listening online and you've never heard anything like this, you've got to build your faith for this. It just doesn't happen. We have to believe God that he wants to use us and, he, and, and, and touch people through our lives, right? Minister better. Look, so look at what it says, verse 34. So Peter said to him, uh, Aeneas, Jesus the Christ heals you. Arise and make your bed. Then he arose immediately. Look at verse 35. So all, oh my goodness. So all who dwelt in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Two cities saved. Did you see that? Two cities, one healing. Two cities, one healing. That's why we have to be faithful, folks. We just got to be faithful. Don't look for crowds. Don't look to please masses and all this kind of stuff just be faithful because you're going to come across somebody and you're going to be in you're going to be in home depot or you're going to be in zares or you're going to be in a, lo a local grocery store or you're going to be walking the street and something's going to happen to somebody and you're just going to be the vessel and it might save the whole town it might save the whole city it might save who knows what when it's the right person i said when it's the right person See, we think sometimes God is slow in doing things with our lives. He's setting everything up. And sometimes we have to wait for him to set the biggest thing up because he, 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 doesn't, he wants to, to shock and awe. Say, my God is a shock and awe God. So he doesn't just want to heal everybody. He does. But he also sets some up to, so that an entire city can get saved. Can Barry get saved in a day? Can Innisfil get saved in a day? Can Aurelia get saved in a day? Yeah. And it, it might only be one miracle or two. Praise God. Remember on the Isle of Malta? Publius. <laughs> I think that's next week. We're going to talk about Publius. He gets saved and the whole island gets saved. Revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is how it's going to happen. And it's not going to just happen in one location. It's going to happen all over this nation with regular Christians full of the Holy Ghost that are just praying for people and open to the Spirit of God and a declarative unction will come and bam, somebody's going to get healed and it's going to cause a stir and the gospel will be preached. Remember in Acts chapter 3, the gate, guy at the gate called Beautiful? 3,000 got saved. 3,000 people got saved. In Acts chapter 4, 3,000 people got saved. Why? Because one guy at the gate called Beautiful got healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to be people that know, we must know what the will of God is. And receive it. And we, we, and we must not receive just anything. The church is receiving all... Historically, the church constantly receives the wrong stuff in other words many good people just believe whatever happens to them is the will of God it's not well God's sovereign if he wants to do whatever I guess he can listen I keep telling people this God's only sovereign outside his word most people go I said that to my sister-in-law and she went can't wrap my head. Say, if he's written it in the book, say this. If, if he's written it in the book, it can't be overridden. So he's really not sovereign there. He's sovereign in the sense that he gave us the book, right? But he can't change the, the word sovereignly. If he does, Satan can become God. That's not happening. 
say that'll never happen. What he's written in the, what's canonized in this book is the truth. And he can't override it. So, so by the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have been made whole over 2,000 years ago at Calvary. That's the truth. It's canonized. So he can't override it. He's not sovereign in that regard. In other words, it's done. In the mind of God, healing is done. Right? So when you pray, Lord, please heal me, he sits in heaven and goes, I have. He says, I have. I, I did that 2,000 years ago. It's done for you. Now you must believe. Now I'm talking about believers now. I'm not talking about the unsaved. So don't put this, don't get mixed up. And too many Christians putting on unbelievers Christian pressure. <laughs> they, they, they just are to be ministered to. Glory to God. But we're the church, and we're learning how to minister, right? We're learning how to receive. So we want to minister properly. So as the church receiving, we got to receive by? As believers. <clears throat> God has mercy on people outside of, of uh, salvation. He'll touch people. He'll touch the lost. He'll, he'll touch a lost person so that he can win them into the kingdom. Right? They'll do all kinds of things. But, but as we mature, we have to develop responsibility to believe God's word and not act like we're outside the church. And just, well, if God wants to heal me, I guess he, he can if it's his will. We've got to know what his will is. Right? And then we've got to believe. I'm talking to believers. If you're not a believer and you're watching online, he'll touch you tonight no matter what. But you need to get saved. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. So Ananias gets up off his bed. Say, say uh, if, let me just finish this thought. If we believe as the church that whatever happens to us is the will of God, that's Hinduism. It's called fatalism. Come see, come saw. Well, I guess it's God's will. I prayed uh, for six months and nothing happened, so I guess it's God's will to keep me this way. Wrong. Wrong. It's never God's will to keep you sick. Ever. Settle it. You got to settle it. It's never, and you need to listen to all the podcasts. Settle it. It's never God's will to keep me sick. Well, I prayed and I, I went to different ministries and had hands laid on by the best of them and nothing's ever happened. So he must want me this way. Wrong. Everybody say wrong. It's always God's will to heal me now. 21 weeks, we proved it. We proved it scripturally. You can't take your experience and change the word. You have to take the word and say, Lord, bring my experience up to what the word says. Too many people looking at good people. Everybody say good people. Good people die. Okay, let me say it this way. God will never heal you because you're good. Say, God will not heal me because I'm a good person. If he did that, he would heal you because of works. Because you worked yourself to be good. God does not heal good people. He heals people who believe. Say, he heals the believer. Over and over and over again, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus said, because of your faith, you have been made whole. Because of your faith, you have been made whole. Because of your faith, you have been made whole. 15 of the 20 personal examples in the Gospels, because of your faith, you have been made whole. Because of your faith, you have been made whole. Faith has a lot to do with everything. Hallelujah. And even when Holy Spirit activated a healing, there was a faith response in half of those that was required. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. So we're working on the faith end, right? Because many, many, many times it's faith that caused it to come to pass. Everybody say eight years paralyzed. Uh, 
You got to get, if you're listening to me and you've been sick a long time, or you're in here and you've been sick a long time, you can't, you can't settle to manage your sickness. You got to stay desperate. So many people just slide into management. Well, I got to learn how to live with this or medication. Management and medication will kill the desire for the truth. Now, I'm not saying you don't manage and medicate, but that's, you can't settle there. You can't settle in your management and medication because if you do, then you will stop believing. Say, I have to believe. So, so I say this to people, if they're on medication, say it's pain medication, you know, because they have a lot of pain in their body and they're believing God. You're on pain medication. Every time you take that pain medication, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, I'm being healed. Thank you, Jesus, this is helping me temporarily, but I believe in you. Lord Jesus, you're gonna take, you're gonna take and turn this disease around. I thank you, Lord, for the medication, but Lord, medication doesn't heal, you heal. You gotta talk like that. Or your faith goes towards the management. Your faith goes towards the medication. And you gotta train yourself that Jesus is the only one who heals. Say, Jesus is the only one who heals. Jesus is in the unsaved body. And the person that doesn't even know him, Jesus is in there. And if, he, if a person breaks their arm six weeks later, that arm becomes whole and mended. That's Jesus. Jesus is the only healer. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus heals the lost. He heals, he's put in the natural body, healing processes. The anointing is in the lost person's life. What happens is when you get saved, more anointing comes into you. When you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, more anointing comes on you. The more faithful you are in releasing the Spirit of God in your life, the more anointing that comes. Faithfulness to what you have increases the anointing. Everybody has an anointing to be healed. So if you get a headache, it can go away. Right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. When Natasha was in the hospital, I grabbed the medication and I took, and that was thanks to Debbie. She said, Danny, don't forget, pray with medication. I did that. She had been in the hospital for almost six days. I took the medication with my hands. I prayed. And within probably six hours, that's when all the turnaround came. Right. And she was out of the hospital. Right. Say no power in the medication. No power in the medication. Medication is medicating. It's managing. Right? Not healing. Say medication never heals. Say, you got to get this in your heart. Yeah. Medication never heals because we live in such a culture that, that people idolize doctors and they're, they're important. We do need medication, yes. right? It helps us. It helps us because if, you're, if, you're so, if, you're so, if your mind is so disturbed, right, you can't believe anything. If, you're, if, all you can, if your whole life is torment, yeah, you, you, you need something to, so that you can believe God, right? So I'm not against doctors, and I, but I, what I'm saying is we can't settle on the management of medication. Say, I can't settle there. Jesus is my healer. And, it's, and it's, you got to be radical because it sounds radical to the Christian church. Jesus is the only one that heals. The Bible says in Colossians that if you took Jesus out of this chair, it wouldn't exist. Everything in this natural realm exists because of Jesus. Read the book of Colossians. It says everything was made by him and through him. Everything that exists, Jesus is in. To different degrees. When you get saved, he's more in you. Right? But if I take Jesus out of the chair, if I take Jesus out of this podium, if I take Jesus out of that piece of wood, there is no wood. He holds all things together. He holds all things together. <clears throat> So it's not the medication, it's not, those, those are helpers. They all help us, sustain us, but they don't heal us. Jesus is the healer. Vitamins don't heal you. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. And you got to settle that so when you pop that aspirin, 
And there's, you know, whatever. When you pop that aspirin, you say, thank you, Lord. I'm going to medicate this, but Jesus, you're my healer. Do you understand? It, I know it seems so culturally radical, but it's not. Jesus is everything. <laughs> you take Jesus out of this world, there is no world. In the beginning. I said in the beginning was the word. Nothing exists, nothing has place, nothing has substance without Jesus. Jesus is everything. And that's why, that's why the enemy wants us to stop saying his name and takes his name, takes his name out of the politics and the educational systems. Just get rid of the name because the name is the most powerful name. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Jesus Christ is Lord. He has the highest place. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Speed this up a little bit. Exodus 15, verse 26 says, For I am the Lord who heals you. Now, here's what I want you to see. Peter, in verse 34 of, uh, of Acts 9, he says uh, to Aeneas, Jesus the Christ heals you. Jesus, the anointed one and his anointing, heals you. Jesus heals you. Jesus heals you. Now, this is going to sound really, really simple. But it is kind of simple. <clears throat> Say, Jesus heals me. Say it again. Jesus heals me. <clears throat> now, if you say that long enough, and you get full of that, full of that revelation... He heals you. You don't have to know every scripture in the Bible. Jesus heals me. Peter says, Jesus the Christ heals you, Aeneas. Jesus the Christ heals you. Jesus the Christ heals me. Jesus the Christ heals me. Jesus the Christ heals me. If I was dying of cancer, personally... If I was dying of cancer, I would say, Jesus the Christ heals me from morning till night until I had it so strong in my inner man that he's my healer, my healer, my healer, my healer, my healer, my healer, my healer. Jesus, you're my healer. Jesus, you are my healer. Jesus, you are my healer. Come on, say it. Jesus, you are my healer. Jesus, you are my healer. Jesus, the Christ is my healer. Jesus, the Christ is my healer. Jesus, the Christ is my healer. Not just for Aeneas, but for us. We must believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is our healer. That's how you got saved. You believed in your heart and confessed him with your mouth unto salvation. Healing is no different. Financial prosperity is no different. You got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Not, but, you know, people say, well, what happens if I, uh, I don't really believe in my heart, but I, I just start confessing. Well, eventually you'll believe in your heart if you confess long enough. It works kind of both ways. Say, I got to have it in my heart. And then it has to come out of my mouth. Say, I got to have faith in two places. I got to have faith in my heart. And I got to have faith in my mouth. A lot of people have stuff coming out of their mouth, but it isn't in their heart. It's, when you get it in your heart, and you confess it from your heart through your mouth, it produces. That's when it actually takes place. you got to believe. That's why when people believe in Jesus as a Savior in their heart, and they confess it with their mouth, they are saved unto salvation. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Say, healing is no different. 
Say, Jesus, the anointed one, heals me. He is my healer. Found in Exodus 15, 26, it says, for the Lord who heals you. Say, he's my healer. Healing's been all through the Old Testament, but now it's through Jesus Christ. Jesus is my healer. Acts 9, 34, Jesus the Christ heals me. Everybody say, Jesus the Christ heals me. So people say, well, what about Job? <laughs> uh, that's the oldest book in the Bible, by the way. Um, <clears throat> what about Job? Well, let me tell you about Job. It went on, he had a bad half a year. It was about a half a year. So, some say six weeks. Some say six months. Say half a year. Say he had, say he had a, a terrible half year. But the second half got really good. Job 42 says the Lord healed him and gave him double by the end of the year. So the first half was pretty tough. But people, it, it's amazing how people don't see Job, Job 42. They talk about Job's suffering, you know, the boils and everything. But God healed him within six months and gave him double. Double for his trouble. In six months. In six months. How many have ever had a bad half year? Right. But look to Job. <laughs> Say, Job is my answer. He got healed. <laughs> he got delivered. And Jesus, it doesn't have to take six months. Hallelujah. So go to Job 42. We'll look at that and then we'll pray. I got some Psalm scriptures I wanted to get to, but we won't. Yeah, we'll do it next week. Praise God. <clears throat> Job is there before Psalms. If you get to the Psalms. So when people say, well, you know, I'm suffering like Job, that means they're getting healed and double. All right? So tell them that. Man, I don't, I don't like religion. Religion kills faith. I said religion kills faith. <clears throat> do, you know, do you know why Job had suffering to begin with? Because of fear. The, f the things that he feared came upon him. Right? It says right in the first chapter. Everything he feared came upon him. Fear will bring curse. Fear will bring sickness. Fear will bring adversity. Fear will bring all kinds of problems. We, we, that's why 365 times God says, do not fear. Do not fear. He didn't suggest it. It was a command. He commanded us not to fear because he says, we do not have a spirit of fear, but we have a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Is it true? Do we have a spirit of fear? No. Where there's fear, that's your job. Your job when there's fear is to get rid of it. Why do they post cancer pictures all over the place? You go to workout centers. You go to the hospital. You go, you go to public places. They, got, they, got, they send you now things in the mail. Right? I, I got this thing to, to do something. I don't know what it was. What was it? A uh, poop test. Well, I read it, and I didn't really know what it was, and I just tore it up. I'm not testing nothing. Listen, a doctor's job. Now, now I'm not telling you what to do, so, and I'm not telling you what to do either. But, but doctors are designed to find something wrong. And I've buried way too many people who had very little wrong. Well, I think you might have... A cancer cell in your lung, we're not sure. Leave me alone. Right? I know people that have went in to the hospital and got opened up exploratorily and a spirit has entered and they come out of the hospital and they die six months later of something they never saw when they opened them up. Happens all the time. All the time. I've heard doctors say, whenever skin is broken, there's a potential for sickness and disease to come. We are not to open ourselves up. Now, if you have to have surgery and you have to have things that happen, cover yourself in the blood. Just don't go randomly in trust. Because hospitals are full of demons. 
When I go in those places, demons are everywhere looking for a body. So you're laying there in anesthesia, and they've ripped you open. They just go, boom, boom, boom. I got, I got a firsthand account right here in this church that just happened. I'm not going to say it. But things, but things happen. And things come into us if we don't cover, if we don't know who we are. Say, I got to cover myself. Right? It doesn't mean you don't have surgery. You might need to, to get cut. I've had surgery before. But make sure you're covered. Don't go in just trusting that everything's going to be okay. Because there's demons all around surgery places. Hallelujah. So things happen. So we have to protect ourselves. So where am I? Job 42. We've got to keep on course here. Job 42. Then Job answered the Lord and said, verse 1, verse 2, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You asked, so they're in this dialogue. God's asking questions. Job's answering questions. You, you asked, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I, I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said, I will question you, and you shall answer me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Okay? This is, this is Job. Job had these friends. They're talking to him, right? It doesn't matter who you hang around with. And don't hang around with people and go, that come up to you and go, how are you doing? That means they want to know everything that's wrong. Right? What, how do you answer that? <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to make it really like, all you have to do is say, you know, just trusting in Jesus. I love Jesus. Everything's good. That's all you have to say. Right? You don't have to explain. Everybody wants to know why. We, we've learned one thing in the last year and a half, right? That Jesus never asked why. Never. He just walked up to people. The disciples were always asking why. They're going like, who sinned? This guy or his parents that he was born blind? Remember that one? Right? How does a guy sin before he's born? Disciples, dumb question, right? Who sinned? This guy that he was born blind? Well, how do you sin in the womb to be born blind? Right? But it was a cultural thing. Jesus said neither. Now we learned that there was sin. Because sin caused the blindness. But we looked up all the scriptures that there will be iniquities followed down through generations, right? So your great-great-grandfather might have done something that requires God to step away and allow certain things to happen. He doesn't do it. He just comes out of the life and lineage of that household to cause, to cause the enemy to come because of pride. It's always pride-related substituting God for something. And it's got to be, we, we learned, it has to be something pretty severe. Because God, God, God's a merciful God and he loves us. But even when that happens, he heals us. Right? He healed the guy. Didn't, fit, didn't try to f explain, well, you know, five generations ago, uh, that, guy, that guy's great-grandpappy great did something. He was, he, was a, he was an evil man and I had to take my... The Lord had to take his hands off him, and it's come down to this guy, and he's reaping the results. He didn't go into all. He just said, no, we're going to heal him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get way too complicated. Jesus wants to heal everybody. Say, Jesus. Yeah. Now, if the Spirit of God says to you, now listen to me carefully. If the Spirit of God says, uh, shows you something, right, by the Spirit. That needs to be dealt with. Deal with it. Put it under the blood and forget about it. Say, the blood, blood. is all I need. And sometimes ignorance or a lack of understanding will cause things to get passed down into good people's Christians' lives. But the, the Spirit of God will reveal that. That's what he's for. But we don't have to constantly 
try to fix that, right? Say, I have to see by the Spirit of God. It's all about the Spirit of God. So here is Job in sackcloth and ashes. Everybody say sackcloth. What's he doing? He's saying, I'm sorry, Lord, for listening to those dudes. And then he prays for them. Lord, they're, they're good people. They're just deceived and they're trying to, trying to help me, but it was against you and I kind of listened to them and I repent. And then it says in verse 10, And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. The Lord restored Job's losses. Look at verse 12. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job. Watch this. You want to talk about Job? The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than the beginning. And then it lists all this stuff. Get down to 16. After this, Job lived 140 years. A chapter before, he's scraping boils off his body. All kinds of things listed there. He's scraping boils off his body, wanting to die. And all he had to do was humble himself and pray for his, pray for his friends. And God said, now, now I can heal you. It was too much pride. Say, God gives grace, God gives grace to, the to the humble. Say, God gives grace, God gives grace to, the to the humble. And God resists the proud. Say, God does. Okay, we're going to pray. Anybody here tonight come specifically to be prayed for? Or were you here just to, to, uh, to learn? Because I'm going to pray for those that are online. But if there's anybody here that specifically has a need of prayer, we will pray for you, and then we will pray for those online. Anybody? Yeah? What do you want? Okay. Do you want to just stand up? Your husband can put his hands on you. Just thank you, Jesus. She wants healing in her hands and heal spurs. So agree with me. Put your, release your faith. We're all, gonna, we're all in this together. Praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus, for your healing virtue to flow into the hands. We thank you, Lord, for the joints. We thank you, Lord, uh, for supernatural lubrication. And, Lord Jesus, no, no pain. We command all pain to go. We speak to the heel spurs to be gone and released from the feet in the name of Jesus. And we command in the name of Jesus, the spirit of God, the blood of Jesus to wash over this vessel, to be totally whole tonight in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. All pain gone, all spurs gone in the feet, all pain in the hands gone. No, no uh, arthritic symptoms in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else? What do you believe in for? Okay. Acid reflux. You know what that is? It's not nice. All right. We just command this acid reflux to be gone from, the, from this life. We thank you that Anthony is whole in the name of Jesus. We praise you, Lord, that we don't have to suffer and manage these conditions and eat certain foods and all these kinds of things, Lord. You want us whole. So we believe it and we receive it. And we thank you, Lord, that this acid reflex go now in Jesus' name. We don't have to understand everything about it. We just command it to stop in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. No discomfort from this day forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You are. More? Right. Right. Yeah, all symptoms to go. Do you want to sit up here? Sure. <clears throat> don't want to get cut open now. No. <laughs> and uh, what's the date of that? February 4th. Okay. Is this both? Uh, this one and then they're going to do it later. Okay, put your hand on. Uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, Donna, you want to come too? And, mm -hmm. uh, knee and hip. Mm -hmm. put, put your hands on her hip or her knees or somewhere. Anybody else want to join? Just This is a lady one. Amen. So, Lord, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your restorative power and fire. And, Lord Jesus, we know that Debbie is being restored. Yes. 
that, that it's becoming less and less infl inflamed, and that, Lord, there's restorative uh, joints taking place. But, Lord, we need it to speed up. Lord God, and it's in your anointing, and she's faithful to come, and she sits under the word of healing. And so we agree with her faith, and Lord, we just speak to the bones. We just speak to the bones in her body to mend and to be whole, and we just thank you. Everything that has to happen will happen. Lord, you're the God that can turn steel into bone. So Lord, you can take bone and make it healthier and make it stronger and make it uh, pain-free. So we declare in the name of Jesus that Lord Jesus that your uh, healing power flow into her body now and bring total restoration and she will know that she's healed in Jesus name in Jesus name praise you Lord hallelujah thank you Lord praise you Jesus and if you're on uh, YouTube or listening to us on podcast just just agree for the healing power of God in your situation to touch your life let me let me pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that you be whole I thank you Lord that all infirmity leaves I speak to I speak to eyes I speak to ears I speak to infections I speak to I speak to that spine to be made and aligned properly I speak to hips and bones I speak Lord Jesus to arthritis I just declare in the name of Jesus uh, what Ever the person watching is uh, is is dealing with that it go now in the name of Jesus that the healing virtue of Jesus heals you Jesus is your healer Jesus is your healer Jesus is your healer Jesus is your healer Jesus the Christ heals you now now begin to praise the Lord hallelujah praise you Jesus praise you Jesus praise you Jesus as we sit under the word of healing, our faith arises and, and infirmity gets less and less. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it's in, instantaneous. Sometimes it's like turning slowly. Some of the scriptures that we're going to talk about in the book of Psalms is how healing turns things, turns things. Your life is being turned. If you're watching regularly, if you're listening regularly, things are turning things are turning some things happen instantly other things turn more slowly but the word is working the Spirit of God is using the word in your life and it is working so just begin to praise the Lord thank Jesus hallelujah hallelujah we give you praise Lord hallelujah well praise the Lord have a great uh, sleep tonight believe God